From the WKBN First News Network, home of the high school basketball starting five, celebrating 20 years of local high school sports on the game of the week. This is a special presentation of high school wrestling, sponsored by Stadium GM on MyYTV. Inside jam-packed Austin Town Fitch High School, it is the Eastern Ohio Wrestling League champions on display here tonight. Chad Krispinski alongside Dean Conley, and again, we're going to showcase some tremendous wrestling talent here tonight. This is a day that so many folks look forward to. Yeah, this is the best of the best. This is the premier wrestling league in the entire state of Ohio, and we have just a dandy today. We really do. Tonight, it's going to be exciting. Every weight class has ranked kids. We are all set to get this thing underway as we will head to the main mat. And began at 106 pounds, Canfield's Ty Stricko against Louisville's Dominic Hoffer. Hoffer is a freshman, Stricko is a freshman. Stricko told us earlier today, he knows it's not as common as a freshman to come up with an Eastern Ohio Wrestling League title. Yeah. But Hofferth is ranked number four in the state. Yeah, yeah. Hofferth, uh, a, re a really tough freshman, and Ty in his own right is, as well. This is, uh, you're going to have a freshman champion here. Uh, Hofferth really is, uh, is, is the wrestled year-round, off-season in Fargo, preseason at, at Super 32. But you're going to see, you know, you don't get here by accident. Everybody here belongs here. Hofferth with a 2-1 advantage. Uh, Head over heels. Over there, he might have caught him. Back points piling up for Hoffarth. His reputation precedes itself, trying to end things in period number one. Hoffarth still going to work, and that will do it. Hoffarth makes quick work of Ty Stricko of Canfield. And so the champion at 106 is Dominic Hoffarth of Louisville, an impressive start. And you said he had some special talents, and he showed those right there. Yeah, Ty kind of got caught there. Uh, real nice barrel and dump to his back there. Um, Ty got caught in a hard to get off your back here. So we will move ahead to the 113-pound level. It'll be Alex Bailey of Alliance against Louisville's Dan Adams. Bailey took fifth a year ago at this tournament. He's ranked number 13 in the state. Dan Adams of Louisville ranked number 14. He placed seventh last year. Yeah, this is a kind of maybe a, a we might, might be seeing a sneak preview up. Of, uh, of a district final match here. These, these guys will be wrestling in the same district uh, at Alliance later this year, postseason. Back to the middle we go. Out of bounds is the ruling. A nice shot there. Adams says he loves to push the pace, loves to dominate. See what Bailey's doing right there. Grabs that wrist, makes it tough for Adams to finish. He obviously feels comfortable there, even though he looks like he's at disadvantage. And uh, nice finish there, clean finish by Adams. There's the first two. As we're inside of 90 seconds left in this first period. At the 113 pound level, Adams up to nothing. Bailey coming in with 16 wins, five losses on the year, out of bounds. And back to the middle we go. Looks like Adams wants to go back on his feet here. It'll make it 2-1. So it's 2-1 in favor of Adams. Adams says he brings intensity. That's his best attribute on the mat when he steps there. Yeah, he does move forward a lot. Kind of stops that throw and gets two there right on the edge. So blood time here as Alliance's Alex Bailey will have to be attended to. It is now 4-1 in favor of Dan Adams. 
you know, Chad, one thing to say, just as a, you know, this is kind of a, a historic uh, a event for our wrestling league here. Uh, you got to give uh, hats off to Commissioner Mike Helm and, and Max Pierce and all the coaches, the people at Fitch have been wonderful to help us try to kind of navigate having a, 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 an event like this covered. Um, they've been top, they've been top one play, they really have. Of course, we came here early this morning and, and this place was jam packed. So many folks in attendance taking this one in. Lots of interest in the sport that continues to grow a sport that you know and love well. Yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been uh, it's been an explosion of talent and hard work on, on coaches and wrestlers. Uh, it's, it's really the premier wrestling uh, uh, conference in the state. So we are back to it following that blood time. Bailey and Adams locked up. Little throw there if he gets it. Ah, uh, that's nice. Adams trying to end it. Those points starting to pile up. Bailey fighting hard there. He's got 20 seconds here. Can he can he fight for 20? It's gonna be tight. Adams trying to finish things off as we close in on short time. And Adams. Bailey hanging on for dear life. Three seconds, two and one. Three back points. We also have an illegal move here. If you care to explain that one. Yeah, they were kind of they were kind of um, facing a, a kind of away from us. From what I probably understand is it probably you have, when you have a headlock, you have to have the head and the arm encircled. And what probably happened is the arm slipped out and he just had both of his hands around the head. So Adams all of a sudden has opened up a 9-3 lead and we're all set for period number two. A lot of action in the first period there, huh? Look at that. No doubt about that. Take down by Adams. Bailey trying to work his way out and he's way out, almost onto the hardwood off of the mat and it's 11-3 Adams. Yeah, he feels comfortable on his feet. He just wants to keep wrestling on his feet. He keeps letting him go. Takedowns two points and escapes one and he feels like he can maybe catch him off of his feet. You can hear the official saying watch the hands to the face. Safety of the utmost importance. Adams with another takedown. Tack on two more. Adams loves the single leg and the high cross when we visited with him this morning. He's got that reinforced, uh, look, he's got double, double arm bars there, an arm bar and a half there. That's going to be tight. Lost the arm bar, but he's running that half pretty tough. Inside the final minute, we'll head back to the middle. <laughs> you know, Chad, you're only halfway through the match here. You got 17 points, 18 points already scored. Uh, it's a lot of action here. 13-5 is our score. Inside the final minute of period number two, Bailey up on top. Adams trying to grab a hold of those ankles. Bailey locked up with Adams. Bailey head over heels. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great scramble right there to fight out of that. Can he hold him off still? It remains 13-5 as we're down to 20 seconds left in this period. Adams, two more. Yeah. And it's now... It's going to be 15-5. 15-5, yeah. yep. As the final five seconds will tick on down. And we are done in period number two at the 113 pound level. What's the game plan for Bailey now? Well, to be honest with you, you're down 10. You got to try to ride on top. You got to try to go for the pin. You're not going to be able to accumulate and catch up now. Nope. You need a home run here, so you, you got to go after a pin. Swing for the fences, <laughs> yes. as they say. There's an escape. Coach Craig Shaw over there at Alliance does a phenomenal job, he and his staff. Um, their kids are always really well coached. Um, you see, Bailey gets in those situations sometimes. He still feels comfortable. He scrambles really well. It is 16-5 in favor 
of Adams. Bailey trying to find an opening to go for that home run, but Adams is having none of it. Yeah. Adams keeps attacking. He's up 10. He's still attacking. You have to love that as a coach and as a fan. He could be in a little trouble here if Adams could step that leg. 114 left in the third. Two more. As the points continue to pile up in a high scoring affair. One of the highest scoring affairs I've seen. Yeah, he's really keeping the pressure on all three periods. This is impressive by uh, by Dan Adams. Adams, as we mentioned earlier, ranked number 14. He took a look over at the clock. Yeah, an escape. The, yeah, the 15 point advantage. He's looking for a tech fall here. Um, you know, Chad, we've done this a couple of times just to, to kind of let everybody at home what blood time is exactly. You, you have five minutes um, uh, to stop a bloody nose or some sort of cut, but what they'll do is they'll they'll stop the bleeding and then the rest is just cleanup time to make sure both both guys are clean, the mat is clean, and so on and so forth. Uh, something like a, a bloody nose, very common. They'll plug it. These guys are used to it. They'll get right back in there. So we're at 50 seconds left in the third period. Adams well on his way at the moment to his 24th win, which would earn him an EOWL championship at the 113-pound level. Of course, tonight's high school wrestling event is being streamed live at WKBN.com. Download the WKBN mobile app to watch all of our action all season long, regardless of sport. You'll also find high school scores, stories, highlights, and more. Download the WKBN mobile app today. Inside of 50 seconds left, Adams trying to polish things off and win for himself a crown. Adams showing that great strength once again. Bailey continues to hang on for dear life as we're perilously yeah. close to ending this thing. Yep. If he gets back points here, it's going to at least be a technical fall. And he's got it. And Dan Adams of Louisville has but 15 seconds left officially in this one. And it may end sooner than that. And it is exactly what you said. That technical fall. So congratulations to Louisville's Dan Adams, the EOWL champion at the 113 pound level. We'll take a timeout. Bring you back to Austin Town Fitch High School. You're watching live coverage of the EOWL championship. Oh, so this is what your living room looks like. Watch Daybreak weekdays at 5 a.m. Save big on name brand products at Bin Voyage in Liberty. Everything in a store is $10 or less and up to 95% off retail value. Thousands of items are up for grabs with new inventory weekly. Dig in and save today at Bin Voyage on Belmont Avenue in Liberty. Okay, STEM stands for science, technology, and engineering, and math. Project-based learning is saying, here's a real-world problem, and there's a million ways to get you an answer. It's about learning to solve problems any way you can. They're getting to learn exactly how something works. They're discovering it on their own. They work together, they're communicating, they're bringing in their ideas to the table. They're slowly progressing towards this bigger picture because it's so cool. We have something for everyone. Amazing half-off deals. Sign up now for email notifications and start saving. of the EOWL Championships. Chad Prisminski, Dean Conley with you. Mark Eberling of Beaver Local facing off with Garrett Lotzenheiser of Louisville. This Louisville program, I saw it earlier today. We've already seen it this evening at the championships. They are a force in high school wrestling. 
Final yeah, they'll vie for the state championship uh, this year for sure. They're deep. Their guys are tough. And you figure they're two for two now already in the first two weight classes. Watson Heiser is ranked number 19 in the country. And number one in the state, obviously. And then I think Mark is uh, fifth, right, in the state. Ranked fifth in Ohio. You're exactly right. First two of the night. Going the way of Watson Heiser. Garrett Lawson has your defending state champion as well. Um, ranked number one, obviously, but he is uh, aggressive and just like uh, Dan Adams was for his teammate, constantly moving forward. He told me he loves to push the pace. He is aggressive at all costs. We're seeing that here. Yeah, kind of on the edge. This looks... I think he's getting back points there. It's going to be tough to pin from there. And the back points... Up to three. And so he's off to a fast start is Lotzenheiser. It's 7-1. Lotzenheiser leading Beaver Locals, Mark Emerling. Emerling says he just continues to work. He's patient, though, picks his spots. And he'll have to pick some spots here, trailing by five now. Yeah, that pressure be, begins to be overwhelming a little bit. Mark's going to have to get on the offense like he does. He well coached his dad in the in the chair there with Coach McComas there from uh, Beaver Local. 15 seconds left in this one. Lotzenheiser back up on his feet. Emmerling on the offensive. Almost. Final five seconds. And the first period is in the books. Great start for Louisville's Garrett Lotzenheiser, who comes in with a record of 30 and 3. Yeah. 30 and 3. So we're all set for the second period. And it'll be these two starting things off to start the period. In the neutral position. You get the feeling here that uh, with the pressure of Lotzenheiser, Emerling's going to have to pick up the pace and get on the offense. Uh, going to have to attack there. It's, it's too much pressure right now. There's a point in time when that patience has to turn quickly into urgency. Yes, I agree. 7-3, Lotzenheiser with the lead. Lots and highs. Really nice. Yeah, nice duck under right there. Really slick. He likes that underhook, that right arm underhook. Uh, feels very comfortable there, and there's a lot of offense there. It's now 9 4 in favor of Lotzenheiser. Lotzenheiser took first place at the Brexville tournament. Also had quite an outing as there's two more at the Mommy Bay Classic. Yeah, that's growing into a really, really competitive tournament as well. Just last weekend, I believe, right? Yeah. yeah. Seven point edge for Lotzenheiser, and <laughs> he almost went <laughs> right into the front row. Yeah, good job by the assistant official, Charlie, there, Charlie Hardman, uh, protecting the kids so they don't hit the floor. And for that matter, the fans in the front row. <laughs> Another takedown. Two more for Lotzenheiser. And there's an escape. Seen a lot of points in these yeah. early matches. Yeah. And I think, you know, Louisville, one, two, three, right out of the gate here. The three, three Louisville kids, pressure, 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 just building up points. Here's a nice, maybe a throw. Yep. Watson Iser, another takedown, and now we're out of bounds. It's 17 6. Well, you have 40 seconds left. You wouldn't think the guy ranked number one in the state in Lotzenheiser and the guy ranked fifth would have this much of a gap. Right. Boy, Lotzenheiser looks fantastic. We said it. He loves to be aggressive, and he was right from the very start, and it has paid off. Lotzenheiser. With two more. Got a half in there, he's got some legs in there, he's gonna get backs, no? 
Just a little bit bad position. Emmerling might be able to score here. One. Four and a half seconds left. 17 to eight, Lotzenheiser. On the escape by Emmerling and the period is now in the books. So Lotzenheiser with a 17-8 advantage. And now, much was the case in the previous match, Emmerling, he's got to come. He does. He does. I actually thought maybe he'd pick top at some point. He's very good on top, but uh, their coaches must have seen something they didn't like there, and that's okay. Um, they're very deserving to be here, but I'm shocked at the separation of points here and the gap between these two right now. 11-point lead for Lotzenheiser. In the 120-pound weight class on deck, we have 126 coming up. Lotzenheiser continues to just pile up those points. It's 21 to 9. And there's a one for Emerling. Closing in on that final minute. Watsonheiser perilously close to the edge of the mat. Yeah. Now they're going to be ruled out of bounds. So a takedown, but too yeah, far out. Too far out of bounds. It looked like actually Everly kept wrestling. It looked like he might have had two there, but I didn't hear a whistle. But with the third and fifth place matches going on behind us, sometimes it might have been you know an inadvertent wrestle. So they add two seconds to the clock because of that very quick stoppage. You know, if you're Mark Emerling, you need to, you need to throw to your back. You need to try to you need to get a pin here. You need to try something maybe you don't feel great about, but it gives you an opportunity to, to get a pin. Another takedown for Lotzenheiser. And so we'll also add one for Emerling. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of points in the first three matches. <laughs> a couple of times we were together before, we'd be lucky to see this much in three or four. Yeah, there a takedown. That's the tech fall there, too. That's that's 15-point advantage. That'll end it. Congratulations to Louisville's Garen Lotzenheiser. Lotzenheiser picking up the EOWL championship at 120. We'll be back with 126 following these words. You're watching live coverage of the EOWL championships on my YTV. You know, you can't fake this. Daybreak, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. Here at BNR Wholesale Tire and Wheel, we have 17 and 18 inch custom wheels for your car, starting as low as 119 each. My basement was dreadful. Cracked concrete, chipped tiles, it was my dumping ground. Carpet, vinyl, wood, don't last. Now I have Pebble Stone, the best basement floor covering. Made with natural stone and the strongest man-made binder. Pebble Stone evened out my floor. Easy to clean, resists moisture, and withstands flooding. You will love your basement. Call locally owned Pebble Stone and receive 50% off. It's not just any stone, it's Pebble Stone. It can affect anyone. I thought I was had the flu. I never thought that I was having a heart attack. It doesn't discriminate. If you don't see the scar, you don't even know he's just a normal five-year-old. Starting Monday, 33 News shares stories of the heart. Real people, real stories. An in-depth local look at the impact of heart disease and stroke in our valley. Starting Monday at 11, only on 33 WYTV News. Local obituaries and calling hours from all four counties. Easy to read, easy to search. 
MyValleyTributes.com. BNR has been your custom wheel headquarters for 40 plus years. We stock thousands of custom wheels in sizes 17 inch and larger, and we always pass those savings on to you. And welcome back to the EOWL Championships, all set for the 126 pound weight class. It'll be Connor Burris of Hubbard facing off with Austin Town Pitches, Colin Roberts. Burris ranked number two in Division Two. Roberts has quite a resume for himself. Finished third in Fargo in Greco last July. He's a two-time state qualifier. Yeah, he's an exciting wrestler to watch. Uh, Fargo being the, the, really the toughest off-season tournament in the country. And uh, took third last summer. Really, imp really impressive. Roberts says he loves to push the pace and his goal in his mind wear his opponent down and he used the words that he told me he says he wants to break down his opponent his focus is his offense and there it is on cue two nothing roberts yeah he has a, a pretty good motor a pretty good tank he's always always active always busy fun to watch if you're a wrestling fan said his focus is constantly trying to snap the head, trying to tire out the opponent as well as we have an escape. Roberts has a motor, though. That is clear. Yeah, you can see it, and, he'll, and for three periods, you'll see it. First uh, first uh, final match here without a Louisville wrestler here. The first three with uh, three champions crowned by Louisville. So uh, you got Hubbard and Fitch here. It's a nice takedown right there, right on the edge. Very nice, very slick. When you get on the edge like that, Chad, we talked about it before. They changed the ruling, but you want to be above the knee or at the knee. Um, that one's pretty close. It looked like his right hand was above the knee. That's, I'm sure, what uh, Hubbard's coach is talking about as far as the hands being at, at the knee or higher. So it's 4-1 in favor of Roberts. And the change in that rule does impact how you operate right on the edge. And now we have a Yeah, we'll bit see of it here. You see how Collins' right, right arm gets there. It's uh, kind of around his waist there, see that? So he's gonna be above the knee. Close though, very close. And that's a new interpretation this year, so it takes, you know, it takes everyone a little bit of time to, kind of transition to it. Certainly worth an explanation, and that is exactly what Nick Timms of Hubbard is able to get from our official in this 126-pound match. 15 seconds left. Colin Roberts operating up top. Burris trying to break his way free. Under five seconds left. Look at that strength from Roberts. There was an escape they did award. Yeah, early on. Yeah, early on. This one here, uh, yeah, you're right. Burst constantly moving, but, but Colin, very, very strong. A lot of pressure. The first period is in the books. We're all set for the second period now. Colin Roberts up by three in period number two. Yeah, see so he's got that snap, a lot of pressure. You get a guy moving forward, just snap his head down, spin behind. 5-1 Roberts. Roberts with a hold of that head. He's too locked up. Roberts reaching under. Offensive attempt by Burris. Yeah, no. real nice counter there by Burris. Let's see if he can finish it. Collins hard to score on here. See how he feels comfortable. He's tied up that leg. That's called a wizard. He's grabbing his own ankle, and he prevents uh, Burris from spinning behind there. That's a pretty high-level move there. And that's not a surprise from a young man with a resume like Colin Roberts has. 
I said it earlier, Roberts is a two-time state qualifier for a reason. It's out of bounds. Hubbard coach is not liking. No, I didn't like the stalling call there, and that's also something that uh, is transitioning to, you know, you can't back all the way out to the 30-foot circle, and um, Connor did that last time. I think Colin, Colin Roberts pressured him there, though. Inside of 40 seconds left in the period. Roberts still with that 5-1 advantage in what is a low-scoring affair. There's a takedown. Roberts starting to take control. Yeah, always interesting to see. I really I love watching wrestlers when they have a lead, how they react. Uh, Colin Roberts still scoring points. When you coached your guys, did you say stay aggressive all the time? You don't want to rest on your laurels. Stay aggressive when you have that lead. I think you have to stay aggressive and you have to work your, your moves. Don't put yourself in harm's way, though. Don't, don't get out of position. Don't be too aggressive. Just be calculated and smart. So that'll do it for the second period. Roberts up by six. You see, he's ready to go on the line already. He's, he's got a motor. 37 wins, three losses on the season for Roberts. Burris with a mark of 24 and six coming in. The OWL championship on the line here for all of these young men. Yeah, usually you get uh, stuck there on the line. If there's no action in five seconds or so, they'll still made it. Um, close to that situation here. Yeah. Then Burris made his move, and boy, Roberts has an answer for everything. Yeah, real good balance, good hips, good pressure. Uh, scoring on the edge here is important, though, and Burris has to get something going here. He's, he's got to get takedown on the edge there would have been helpful. So back to the middle we go with 65 seconds left. This third and final period. See how he constantly snaps that head down and pressures down. He spins behind. That's a lot of pressure. It looks easy, but it's not. No, not at all. <laughs> Great finish there. There's a takedown. Roberts now really starting to pull away. Up 9-1. Like we were talking earlier, he's up 9-1. to one. He's, not, he's not comfortable. He's going to continue to pressure and score points if he can. Sign of a great wrestler. Now... Exactly what he told us, his scouting report trying to tire Burris out. And it looks like he's doing that. Yeah, a lot of pressure there. He's got that wrist in the back here. This could be, this could be bad if he, uh, I shouldn't say bad, it should be good for him, bad for Burris if he can lace that arm through it. That's, that's pretty tight. 10 seconds left in the third period. Colin Roberts of Austin Town Fitch, a two-time state qualifier, finishing things off, and he comes away with a victory at 126. We'll take a timeout and bring you back to Austin Town Fitch. Following these words, you're watching the EOWL Championships on My Wife TV and WKBN.com. Resistance is futile. Watch Daybreak, 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. weekdays. If you're looking for a great pre-owned car, take the short drive to the Stadium GM Used Car Superstore. That's where you'll see the area's finest and most diverse selection of inspected pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. You'll save hundreds, even thousands more than other dealers. Our budget lot has great deals starting from under $5,000. You'll get financing experts that will help you get the credit you deserve. If you want to see all the great deals waiting for you, just log on to StadiumGM.com. For saving, selection, and satisfaction, come to the Stadium GM Used Car Superstore in Salem. Whether you're looking to buy your first home, your dream home, or refinance your current mortgage, ASECU is here to help. Stop in to one of our five local locations today and make the move to ASECU. Today we're one of the last locally owned and operated financial institutions in the Valley. Our members are and have always been our first priority. Join today and experience the credit union difference. 
ASECU, the best place to save and the only place to borrow. How I Met Your Mother has just what you've been craving. My God, some of these drinks could actually make a girl smarter. How I Met Your Mother, weekdays at 4 and 4.30 on MyYTV. Welcome back. We're all set for the 132-pound weight class. Louisville's Davin Rhodes, the defending state champion from a year ago, facing off of Beaver locals Logan Hours. Rhodes told me earlier today his goal, he looks to break people and you said it's one thing to say it it's something else to see it and we'll see what he comes out with here early on yeah defending state champion and uh, another Fargo uh, placer here from the Louisville team but Logan Howers is uh, is a, t a tough tough wrestler uh, in his own right ranked fifth in the state so uh, I, it'll be interesting to see if he can do that here Rhodes won the EOWL title a year ago he's a two-time state placer and of course state champion his favorite move is the arm spin but Logan Hours of Beaver Local has a hold of the leg and Rhodes worked himself out of trouble yeah great great scramble ability there he was in trouble and uh, looks like uh, Krolik might get too if he can pop his head great scramble by both guys there on the edge so ours and Rhodes back to the middle. And Rhodes staying on the offensive. Ours, on the other hand, second at the EOWL championship last year, sixth in the state in Division Two. Nope. He looks like he's getting that left hand around the waist. That's going to be two there, yeah. There it is. First two of the night at 132. Ours says he's always taking shots. No need to stay patient. And yeah. ours has a 2 nothing advantage. Is down to short time in the final seconds. Yeah, he wants to ride tough here. He doesn't want to give a point here. Rhodes is going to try to get one on the edge, out of bounds. This will be interesting to see on the whistle if Rhodes can get to his feet. If he can steal a point here, it really, it really changes the dynamic of the match, only being up one as opposed to being up two points. 4.1 seconds left. See there, almost. Almost. No, not close. quite. Yeah, close. So it stays 2-0, Logan Hours of Beaver Local. It'll be Rhodes starting down low on the bottom. Hours trying to sweep that left leg. And Rhodes yep. follows suit by grabbing a hold of that left leg and, and ends up yep, sitting at the yep. top. Yep, there's that scramble and two. Yeah, kind of an awkward situation there. Uh, Logan falling backwards there. Now it's 2-2. Rhodes is going to get a chance on top here. Second period. Out of bounds. Back to the middle. What's important to watch here is, if you're the, if the, you're the Beaver local coaches, is can we get away from them here? Can we get a point? Because in the third period, you're going to have to make a choice. And if you can get one here, and then maybe get one in the third, you're in the driver's seat. Hours trying to rip free from the grasp of Rhodes. And out of bounds again, but just barely. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to William Campbell from so Clyde Rhodes. 132 pound wrestler. Again, operating up top. 111 left. Hours. Trying to bust his way free. And yeah, you don't want to get to your belly there. You want to work to your base so you can get free. Being on your belly here is bad news, especially with Davin Rhodes on top. He's very tough on top. And you're burning time. You know, you want to get that one point. Rhodes and ours locked up. Sort of a stalemate at this point, but Rhodes.
Trying to get something going and ours trying to bust free. Yep, he works to his base here. See if he can get to his feet to get one. Rogue's doing a great job keeping pressure on him, not letting him go. Such great strength that takes to not allow another strong wrestler at the same weight level to break free. Yeah, he's got back two points. backs there. Now it's out of bounds, yeah. but Louisville's Rhodes takes a 4-2 advantage. Yeah. Interesting here for if ours can get one or not. Changes your strategy in the third. Yeah, same situation as the end of the first yeah. period. Ours trying for the escape. And the period is over. So it stays at a 4-2 affair. So now you got to go neutral here because you're down two. If you were down one, you could have chosen bottom. So Logan Ours is going to have to rally here in this third and final period. Yeah, he comes out with the first takedown and then finds himself you know, in a hole 4-2 now. The EOWL Championship at 132, hanging in the balance. Ours tried to go on the offensive early on in this third period. And out of bounds again. Plenty of time here, a lot of wrestling left, I think. Two high-level kids. A buck 17 left in the third period. Nice attack there. See if uh, Logan can fight that off. Rhodes tried to sweep nope. the leg. There's a takedown for Rhodes. At this juncture, that is huge. Huge. Yeah, especially the way Rhodes was riding tough in the second period. It's now 6-2 in favor of Rhodes. Rhodes uh -oh. spins ours. They might catch him here. All right. There's a takedown, making the plot even more thick at 6-4. <laughs> yep, now you got 40 seconds. You got to turn him. It'd be tough to take him down twice if you cut him, so you got you to have to turn him, and you got 30 seconds to do so. This is where things get interesting. We've seen some lopsided scores early on here tonight. This one coming right down to the wire. 20 yeah. seconds left. Rhodes trying to hang on, ours trying to rally late. Closing in on the all-important 10 seconds left. Inside of 10 hours, trying to turn Rhodes. Rhodes hanging on for dear life with that outstanding strength, and that'll do it. Good match. Davin Rhodes of Louisville continues his run of success, and he comes away with the EOWL championship in the 132-pound weight class. And we will keep it here and move along to 138 pounds. It'll be Alex Del Garbino, a familiar name in Gerard wrestling circles, facing off with Beaver Locals, Jonathan Potts. On man number two. Potts ranked number 11 at 145's weight class. Del Garbino ranked number eight. And again, Del Garbino's older brother, boy, he had a heck of a career, didn't he? And Our a, first yeah. takedown. Yeah. A great kid and a great family. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's at Princeton right now wrestling. And Alex has a, uh, he's down two nothing, but this one's going to go to the wire too, Chad. This, these are two. Two high-level kids. This one, a uh, couple of really physical kids here. This is going to be fun to watch. So out of bounds and back to the middle we go. Pots up to zip. Two local wrestlers dressed in red. Del Garbino, 34 and three, Potts 25 and five. And now the headgear comes loose. We'll have to readjust that. Del Garbino, really, really strong. I know most of these guys we've been saying, you know, in their own right, in their own weight class, they're strong. Gar Del Garbino is 
very, very strong. His pressure is really, you'll see it on top when he gets a chance to get on top. He's really, really strong. So getting out of that, getting one there is big. Yeah, he loves to pin. He has well over 100 wins in his career, well over 100 career pins as well. So he goes for the gold, but he says he's most efficient, as you said, on top. Yeah. Was a state alternate as a freshman. Alex Del Garbino. Now a senior. Going to work. 2 1 pops over Pots Del the Garbino. Barrel there. There's a takedown. The microphones are picking up. Kind of the commentary from our officials so you can hear what's going on. Yeah. I've always liked these as state uh, state uh, ranked crew here. Every official here has done a great job. They're they're really highly recommended. But I love officials to talk to guys and let them know. Pots up 4-1. Again, we get back to that strategy here. Not giving one or getting one here in this last 20 seconds is important. 17 seconds left in the opening period. Pots. Draped over the top of the back of Del Garbino. Final seconds tick on down, and we're done here in the first period. So Del Garbino came out like he was shot out of a cannon to start, but he hasn't had that opportunity to sort of pounce just yet. Yeah, you're going to see his strength here on top. If Potts can move, he's going to. He can't stay down there for too long. There's an escape. Yeah, very slick. And if you notice, Chad, you know, uh, Jonathan Potts attacking legs, attacking legs. He don't want to be upper body. He doesn't want to be in an upper body situation against Al Garbino. Too strong. Potts telling us earlier, he likes to set the opponent up and then take his shot. Yeah. There's That's a, a big down. two there, yeah. And at this stage, I think a really big two. Yep, 5-3 now. Potts may get a reversal here. If he can pop his head out. Del Garbino hanging on for dear life. Potts trying to squirt his way out of this situation. Yeah, in this situation, if you're Potts, you just need one. You don't necessarily need the two, but he gets it anyway. Yeah. There's the two and the takedown. Down to the final minute of the second period. 7 3, Potts with the lead. Potts has controlled this thing pretty much from the get-go. Yeah, he has I agree. A firm grasp. I agree. Nearing out of bounds territory, and there we are. You know, Gerard chooses top in the second, which is interesting because it'll be Potts' choice in the third. Certainly not going to choose down, so probably go back up on his feet, I would imagine. 35 seconds left in this second period at 138. Beaver Locals, Jonathan Potts against Gerard's Alex Del Garbino. Del Garbino will have to use that aggressiveness that he prides himself on. Good strength there. There's 17 the seconds. Boy, Alex, is, he's dangerous too, the upper body. He can throw it any time. He went for it that time. Down by three at 7-4, final five seconds. And that is going to do it here in the second period. So, Del Garbino will have to rally in this one. And let's see, do we have some blood? Yeah, looks like some blood time there. A little bit. Chad, talking about that, you know, uh, Gerard taking top in the second, which is, I think, maybe Alex's best position. Uh, Pot scoring the way he has. Now he doesn't have to look at choosing down here. He maybe takes Alex out of his best position. Um, and so I think as long as Potts can attack the legs and stay out of the throws and upper body aggressive moves, I think he's fine. But you can never, I mean, Alex is dangerous. I've seen him wrestle for a long time. He can throw somebody from anywhere. So this is far from over. I'm just telling you that right now. <laughs> he can quickly change that deficit into a big time lead. And now he changes the headgear as well. He made an adjustment there. and Didn't like the feel of, of the previous one, perhaps. 
43 seconds left. Of course, high school wrestling tonight. High school basketball resumes next week. The area's best basketball players are part of WKBN starting five, sponsored by Eastern Gateway Community College and being our wholesale tire. Head to WKBN.com and click on sports to see the top high school basketball players from here in the Valley. So we're in blood time here at the 138-pound weight class. Potts and Del Garbino. Del Garbino down 7-4 to start. Potts trying to polish off a title. You mentioned Alex Del Garbino taking that mask off. You know, wrestlers wear that mask because maybe they have, uh, you know, a, a broken nose, a bloody nose, uh, maybe an eye or something like that, you know, cut over their eye to try to kind of keep... Uh, keep it protected, but uh, she made the change at the at the end of the second period. That was interesting. Might have had a hard time seeing with it, so sometimes that bothers uh, wrestlers. Although I've seen him wrestle with it before. 135 left in the third and final period. Let's see if Del Garbino goes for it here. Del Garbino ripped pots. There's two. The 110 left, 9-4 Potts now with that five-point edge. Looks like Del Garbino's getting a little bit fatigued as the escape awards a point. Yeah, and maybe a little bit frustrated too. You know, he's he's dominated his way through this tournament, and uh, Jonathan Potts just staying leg attack. You can't you can't sleep here. You can't sleep here. You got to wrestle all the way through six minutes here. Potts going down low. Garbino to his backside. 43 seconds remaining in this one. He's up four, so he has to be smarter. He can give two here. Uh, this is where we get into a, a, a point where, where Doug Garbino's dangerous here. Now 9-5. He's only nine, down two seven. points here, too, with 25 seconds left. This is going to go to the wire, Coach. Del Garbino. Up top, we're down to 15 seconds left. This one coming down to the very tail end. Del Garbino trying to rally in short time. Final five seconds left in this one. And that will do it. Jonathan Potts comes up with an impressive victory over Alex Del Garbino. And Potts now 26 and 5. He wins the EOWL title at 138. We'll take a timeout and bring you back. 145 on deck. You're watching live coverage of the EOWL Wrestling Championships on my YTV at WKBN.com. Local news from local people. 33 WYTV. Lightline Embroidery and Screen Print in Girard has been a proud sponsor of the Player of the Game for over 10 years. For all of your personalized school or business apparel, event and business signs and posters, they've got you covered. There's only one place to go, Lightline, West Liberty Street, Girard. Hi, Rob Fellman from Boardman Subaru, the home of the safest, most award-winning vehicles on the road today. Subarus are rated the safest vehicles, period, with EyeSight Driver Assist technology that gives you an extra set of eyes on the road. KBB has awarded Subaru as the best mainstream brand with the highest resale value and the lowest cost of ownership. And remember, Subaru is the most fuel-efficient all-wheel drive vehicle in America. Only at Boardman Subaru, just south of Route 224 on South Avenue. Have some fun this winter. Join me, Jim Loboy, at Poland Rotary's 35th Annual Chili Open. It's a day supporting Valley Charities filled with golf prizes and, of course, chili. Come out February 8th to Bedford Trails. And new this year, be a part of the Chili Plunge. Jump in the pond with me to help raise even more money for local charities. For more information and to register, go to PolandRotary.org. Don't miss the Chili Open and the Chili Plunge. We'll see you on February 8th. Whatever the crime. You never come to work thinking you're going to see something like that. Whatever the motive. If he couldn't have her... No one was going to have her. Whatever it takes, answers to mysteries will be revealed. The question is, who's going to benefit by these two deaths? I remember falling to the floor. 
He was finally caught. Dateline, weeknights at 10 on MyYTV. The King of Queens rocks every weeknight. Weeknights at 7 on MyYTV. Lightline Embroidery and Screen Print in Girard has been a proud sponsor of the Player of the Game for over 10 years. For all of your personalized school or business apparel, event and business signs and posters, they've got you covered. If there's only one place to go, Lightline, West Liberty Street, Girard. Welcome back to Austin Town Pitch High School, the Eastern Ohio Wrestling League Championships tonight. Chad Krasminski, Dean Conley with you. We're all set for the 145-pound weight class. Beaver locals, Devin Salisbury against Howland's Matthew Woomer. Woomer, a sophomore, Salisbury, a junior, and we're underway here at 145. Salisbury says he's very cautious, very defensive, very patient. Two different styles. Woomer, very aggressive on the other hand. <laughs> yeah, that could set up for a real nice matchup yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, Woomer was out a little bit. I know you had talked to him earlier today after semifinal match. Um, so he's only wrestled, you know, eight or ten times so far. So I'm anxious to see what kind of shape he's in right now. One away from placing at state a year ago was Woomer. Finished seventh at this championship situation as a freshman. Did Woomer. Still looking for our first points here. Yep, he so, pops that head out. He gets two there. Yep. Yeah, nice. there we go. First two of this one as we're inside the final minute of the opening period. Salisbury up 2 nothing. He... As a freshman finished fourth at the EOWL. He prides himself on having great strength. He's been wrestling for 11 years. He's not going to push anything. He says he waits, and then eventually he's going to take his shot. Yeah, it looked like a full Nelson there. And even if you just touch, you know, you have a half Nelson, and if you, even if you touch his head with both hands, it's, it's a point. Um, so in a, in, a, in a championship match, you never know. That penalty point could come back. Woomer on the board. It's 2-1. Salisbury. We're inside of 30 seconds left and then way out. Woomer down low. Salisbury on top. Salisbury ranked 11th in the state. Woomer 14th. Yeah, very kind of evenly matched. And you can see that, too. They're, they're right on the outside. Maybe a, a rankers think of, of placing. I think they'll both be on the podium this year. I really do. Evenly matched. Two different styles. And it's 2-1 after one. Tough call here because you couldn't get away in the first period, but Coach Zakrasik wants him to choose down. I think it's a good move because you're you're only down a point. And obviously, you know your wrestler's better than anybody. Matthew Wilmer's been wrestling a long time. He knows he knows the score. He knows the situation. Can Wilmer break free? He does. Yeah. Good decision. Two two is our score. Now Wilmer getting after it. Yeah, 2-2 two -two here. Salisbury, great defense there with his hands and his head, kind of keeping his, using his length there a little bit, as keeping Wilmer away from his legs. Might get a stalemate here, yeah. So back to the middle we go. On a side note here, Chad, you have a good little flurry there. You have Rich Kunkel uh, doing this match. It's his 30th year of officiating. He's a local official and uh, state ranked at a state tournament seven or eight times. And also a personal connection to, <laughs> to you. Yeah, yeah, was uh, one of our high school coaches and uh, has become a dear friend over the years. Afterwards, we'll have to find out some dirt and some stories about you in the high school ranks. <laughs> no dirt, no dirt, none. <laughs> Just some good stories. <laughs> It's still 2-2 two -two as we're down to 46 seconds left. Yeah, and you just got that takedown there, so 4-2. Four 4-2. Two. Four two. 
And uh, Salisbury actually in pretty good shape here. He's got legs in, he's, he's pressuring Wilmer. This might be trouble here if he can't get out. Salisbury on top. Wilmer, though, looks like he is a very, very strong young man. 19 seconds left in the period. Can Woomer break his way out of this? Yeah, a point here would be important. As you said, would change the whole complexion. Yeah. Final seconds, and that will do it. And so we head to the third period. Salisbury up by two at 4-2. They choose down there, and then, you know, Salisbury gets one. He's up three, then. It's going to be a lot to come back from. Wilmer down low. Salisbury tried to break free, and now goes on the offensive. Yeah, he's got to spin all the way behind, and he'll get two for reversal. But Wilmer's still tight on that leg, so we'll see what happens here. You know, remember Salisbury started on bottom here, so this is uh, this might end up being a stalemate. If there's, oh, there you go. And there it is, the reversal. Good smart wrestling there by Devin Salisbury. Kind of taking his time, being patient. You said that earlier when you talked to him. He likes to be patient. He's got a cradle locked up here. Um, if he can get him turned, it could be trouble. And time is a-wasting now as Wilmer has to get something going down by four as we're now down to the final minute of this third and final period at 145. Wilmer back to his feet, but quickly back down to his knees. Wilmer looked over at that clock and realizes the urgency here now. Just took a peek for a split second. Yeah, knows he's down four, and he's going to need he's going to need a lot here. He's on the bottom, 35 seconds left. You're down four. He almost need a reversal to his back. 35 seconds left, Wilmer. Salisbury, yes, keeping pressure on him too. It's been impressive. That's been a theme all night, Chad. Yeah. Nobody's defended their leaders. The cradle right there. This could be trouble. Cradle by Salisbury, and Salisbury ends it with 17 seconds left in the third. Salisbury takes the crown at 145. We'll take a timeout. 152 is next. You're watching live coverage of the EOWL Wrestling Championships on MyYTV and WKBN.com. WYTV.com, your home for community news. The Trumbull Career and Technical Center has been recognized by Apple as a distinguished school for continuous innovation in learning, teaching, and the school environment. Visit TCTC February 6th from 6 to 8 p.m. and explore career, employment, or enlistment opportunities while watching hands-on demonstrations in our labs with our experienced instructors and students. Let TCTC help find your E. Trumbull County sophomores, this is your chance to dig deeper into the future and see what TCTC has to offer. February 6th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Experience Eastern Gateway Community College. Eastern Gateway has over 50 programs between our campuses in Steubenville and Youngstown and over 20 programs that can be done fully online. We offer you a quality educational experience that prepares you to enter the workforce or to transfer to a four-year university. Most of all, EGCC is the most affordable option in our region. Enroll at Eastern Gateway Community College and experience college the way it should be. Affordable, practical, and fun. Well, like autism, the Rich Center for Autism has no geographic boundary. Growth in the students is tremendous. 33 WYTV brings you and your family local stories that matter. They could be equally as successful as anyone else, even though they have autism. Raising awareness in our community. This is what it means to believe in this valley. I am a nurse, a firefighter, a college student, a mother, and I am an American soldier. 
I will always be ready for every storm and disaster that threatens my community. I will always be there to protect my neighbors, my family, and my country. We are the Army National Guard. We are the Army National Guard. We are the Army National Guard. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about part-time service. The question is, who's going to benefit by these two deaths? He was finally caught. Dateline, weeknights at 10 on MyYTV. Except for the 152-pound weight class beaver local Skyler Lazier meeting Louisville's Daniel Kennedy. This is a rematch from last year, which saw Lazier come away with a 7-1 win over Kennedy. Yeah, and it was interesting. Both, both guys knew that. They remembered from last year the, the matchup. And when you talked to them earlier, I remember them, at least Skyler Lazier, saying that he remembered the match last year. Laser ranked number six, Kennedy ranked number 12. <laughs> and Laser, mincing no words, said, I'm a mean wrestler. I love to be in a brawl. And he said, quote, I like to jack people up. <laughs> he is a physical kid. You'll see that here. Um, we've had quite a few already. We're only halfway there. But yeah, he's a physical kid. Lazier is a three-time state placer, seventh as a freshman, fourth as a sophomore, sixth as a junior, all in Division II. He'd love to add EOWL champion in 2020 to his resume. Yeah, it's a long resume. He's been a, a, a really just a, a, a rock in that lineup for four years. Yeah, another one of those guys who qualified for Fargo. And he kind of told me that very matter-of-factly. Oh, yeah, I qualified for Fargo. <laughs> Out of bounds? Yeah. Yeah, as if it's something easy to do. You know? Right. <laughs> for him, it must be. Yeah. Beaver Local's wrestling program. We'll see them in a few weeks uh, over at their place for another wrestling duel. But, boy, this program is one of the best in the entire area. Yeah. It, uh, it really is. It's an incredible tradition. Um, and... Uh, Johnny McComb has taken over uh, this year, uh, a good young coach. But yeah, well, we'll see them later in, the, in February, right? Uh, down at uh, their place against Fitch, yeah? Against Austin Town Fitch, yeah. you're right. Yeah, that'll be a good one. A couple of weeks away. 0-0 zero, zero here. That's it. I thought it would have been, uh, you know, we've seen so many high scoring matches right out of the gate. It's kind of disappointing <laughs> when there is spoiled. an offensive. <laughs> you're right. Stay tuned. Here we go. Laser. Trying to get something going, and we're too far out now. Back to the middle. 16 seconds left. You know, sometimes when you wrestle the same opponent over and over and over again, you kind of can neutralize maybe their best move or two, so you start to see the, the score narrow when you see wrestlers wrestle over and over and over again. So maybe, you know, Kennedy's obviously trying to take some things away. He's familiar with Skyler Lazier, and vice versa. So we head to the second with no score. Lazier and Kennedy. Kennedy, second place finish at the EOWL last year. Tells me he's very patient, much different than Lazier. <laughs> Case in point right there. Yeah. Don't be too patient because Lazier will take full advantage. Yeah, and I don't know if you, we, we, in the, earlier in the first period, there was a stalling call there. Lazier got a stalling call on, on Kennedy. So that, that may show up again, too, with his pressure. He's constantly pressuring Kennedy. So Kennedy has to get to work here a little bit. Even though he has choice in the third, he probably needs to get some offense going. Lazier. Back to work. Inside of 90 seconds left in the second period, and these two living out of bounds here at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you want to know, is it by accident or is it by design here? Sometimes, I don't think either one of these guys are wrestling on the edge, but sometimes you get wrestlers that like to wrestle on the edge. Uh, it's frustrating. Still looking. We have one. It's Laser with his first. One-nothing. 
Yeah, I think it's the pressure and the action that's taken him to the edge here so far this match. Kennedy tried to go down low. Laser having none of that. Still not much happening here. Just feeling each other out. Maybe a byproduct of being familiar with one another, not wanting to make that critical mistake. Yeah, there's that stalling call we were talking about that you know kind of comes back to hurt you. Laser's pressuring, Kennedy's backing out. Can't back out, you have to circle there. It's now two nothing laser. Yeah, sometimes you know when you get tied up, that's just potentially dangerous. Sometimes you get your fingers caught. You only you have to grab all four fingers at once. You can't grab them one at a time. You see this pressure by laser. Hard for Kennedy to deal with. He's gonna have to lower his level uh, and counterattack. He has time. Laser has a thicker frame, at least from our vantage point. And that strength is sort of pushing Kennedy back towards the out-of-bounds mark. Yeah, and I think it's different. He's, he's pushing, but he's also trying to shoot. Sometimes co uh, wrestlers just push, and pushing isn't wrestling. You'll see uh, Lazier, you know, kind of attack the legs, try to spin behind. Yeah, he's physical, though, isn't he? Boy, very. Eight seconds left. Kennedy has choice in the third. We'll see what, uh, what they choose. It'll be interesting. You're down two points. And not much happening in the no. final seconds. That's it. So we go to the third period. Laser up 2 nothing. So this one shaping up to be some kind of finish. Yeah, this will be interesting to see these first 10, 15 seconds if, if Laser can get a turn or pressure. It looks like some almost. Laser. And Kennedy again out. Yeah, that was so close. Yeah. You know, you, you're not a three-time stay placer unless you're good in all three positions. And, and Skyler Lazier is. That's probably why they wanted to stay away from bottom in that second period. Skyler Lazier. 23 wins to his name so far this season. Yeah, there's pressure there with that power half. It's going to be hard to fight off of. Laser ends things with a bang. A little flare to go along with it. Laser with a pen will continue after this at 160. Beaver locals, Skyler Laser adds a title to his resume. You're watching live coverage of the EOWL Championships on MyYTV and WKBN.com. Local news from local people. 33 WYTV. If it's not Barry Dingles, it's not barbecue. Funny name, fabulous food. Barry Dingles, Raccoon Road, Austin Town. Okay, STEM stands for science, technology, and engineering, and math. Project-based learning is saying, here's a real-world problem, and there's a million ways to get you an answer. It's about learning to solve problems any way you can. They're getting to learn exactly how something works. They're discovering it on their own. They work together, they're communicating, they're bringing in their ideas to the table. They're slowly progressing towards this bigger picture. Because it's so cool. In his Providence, Rhode Island courtroom... If you were the judge, what would you do? I would forgive her. <laughs> judge Frank Caprio serving a different kind of justice. You getting ready to graduate? Yes, I'm ready. I'm not even going to listen to your explanation. I'm going to give you a graduation gift. The matter is dismissed. You're the best. Next time. You're supposed to butter me up before I make a decision. <laughs> Get ready. He's working delivering pizza, killing himself. He gets a $100 ticket. I don't have the heart to charge him. Caught in Providence. Weekdays at 11 and 11.30 on MyYTV. For news and weather that affects you and your family, we're just a tap away. We'll take you so close to the news, you'll feel like you're with us. Covering local news from where you live. Pinpointing your forecast. Getting you the latest information as it becomes available. Stay connected. Download the WYTV News app and tap for your favorite WYTV favorites like Pinpoint Weather Forecasts and your hometown heroes. Your home for community news. The 33 WYTV mobile app. 
a new home but the same bold talk that you expect from us. Don't miss the real every weekday right here on Youngstown's own My Y TV. Weekdays at 3 on My Y TV. More than just great Q. Funny name, fabulous food. Barry Dingles, Austin Town.